By default, when we write down a matrix, we're describing a way to transform the standard basis coordinates of vectors in its domain. If we can rewrite the action of that matrix in terms of a basis of its eigenvectors, then that matrix will take on a new, much simpler form, which is diagonal. Here we look at the process for how to diagonalize a matrix. Diagonalizing a matrix means rewriting it in terms of a basis of its eigenvectors, so that instead of the standard basis action of this matrix, which can be difficult to understand in its regular form, we will instead seek the eigenbasis effect of this transformation, which will be very simple, because by definition, eigenvectors are vectors on which the matrix A acts by scalar multiplication. And therefore, if we can write a matrix for this transformation in a basis of its eigenvectors, that matrix will be diagonal. Only the entries on the diagonal of that matrix may be non-zero. To relate this to its standard basis expression, we just need a matrix which is capable of changing a basis back and forth from the basis of eigenvectors to the standard basis. If we call that change of basis matrix P, that can get us from the eigenbasis to the standard basis, then P inverse can do the opposite. And this commutative diagram suggests that then the matrix A will be equal to the result of first following P inverse to change the basis from standard to the eigenvector basis, then acting by the diagonal matrix D, and then using the matrix P to change the basis back to the standard basis. And in this notation, A will then be equal to P times D times P inverse. To accomplish this for a given matrix, the first thing we need to know are the eigenvalues and the eigenvectors of that matrix. You can see the full details of this computation in our previous video. For this matrix, the eigenvalues can be found by solving the characteristic equation, determinant of a minus lambda i is equal to zero, which turns out to be a cubic polynomial that factors in this fashion, and we get the eigenvalues, lambda equals two, with algebraic multiplicity two, so it's a repeated root, and lambda two equals four, with algebraic multiplicity one. It will be convenient for us when there are roots with algebraic multiplicity higher than one, in other words, repeated roots, to write them as two distinct eigenvalues in a way. So for my root with algebraic multiplicity two, I'm gonna call it both lambda one and lambda two. And for my root with algebraic multiplicity one, we'll call that one lambda three. The goal here is to identify three uh, roots for the characteristic equation, even though two of them happen to be the same. Now that we know the eigenvalues of this matrix, we may find the eigenvectors. And again, the details of this computation can be found in the previous video. The summary is that we'll solve the equation a minus lambda times the identity times the vector v is equal to zero, seeking one of the infinitely many solutions that this equation will have for each of my eigenvalues. For the eigenvalue two, the augmented matrix a minus two i with zero gives us this system of equations for which the reduced row echelon form looks like that. We have two free variables, and setting each of those free variables equal to a parameter, t and s, we convert this back to equation form, find out that if y is t and if z is s, then x plus t minus s is equal to zero, and therefore x is equal to minus t plus s. Factoring out the parameters t and s, we discover a basis for the solution space to consist of the vectors minus one, one, zero, and one, zero, one. Therefore, those two vectors are a basis for the eigenspace associated with the eigenvalue two. For the eigenvalue four, the same process gives us a system of equations, which when we row reduce, we find has one free variable, the variable y, which we will set equal to the free parameter t, and then find that if y is equal to t, the third equation, the second equation tells us that z is equal to zero, 
and the first tells us minus x plus t minus z is equal to zero, from which we can rearrange and simplify z is equal to zero, get x by itself, factor out the t, and we find that the vector 1, 1, 0 is a basis for the eigenspace associated with the eigenvalue 4. Now that we have a full accounting of the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of this matrix, we're ready to come up with the diagonalization for this matrix. That will be possible only because the algebraic multiplicities and the geometric multiplicities of all of the eigenvalues of A agree with one another. The eigenvalue 2 has algebraic multiplicity 2 because it was a twice repeated root of the characteristic equation, but it also has geometric multiplicity 2 because its eigenspace was two-dimensional. Likewise, and this will always be the case for roots with algebraic multiplicity 1, the geometric multiplicity of that eigenvalue is also equal to 1. Therefore, since those multiplicities all agree with one another, this matrix is diagonalizable. Then to diagonalize it, all we need to do is construct the change of basis matrix P, which changes our basis from the eigenvector basis back to the standard basis. And from what we know about change of basis matrices, the matrix which accomplishes that change has as its columns the basis vectors, i.e. the eigenvectors. And then the matrix D, which accomplishes the transformation in the eigenvector basis, is the diagonal matrix whose diagonal entries are exactly the eigenvalues. So for the diagonal matrix D, we place the eigenvalues of our matrix on the diagonal. And any eigenvalue that has an algebraic multiplicity greater than 1 has to be repeated. In this example, the eigenvalue 2 gets repeated twice because of its algebraic multiplicity. Then the change of basis matrix will associate the eigenvectors associated with those eigenvalues in a corresponding fashion. So since the first two eigenvalues are two, the first two columns of eigenvectors in the matrix P will be the eigenvectors associated with that eigenvalue. So minus 1, 1, 0 and 1, 0, 1. The first two columns of P are associated with the first two diagonal entries in D. And the third column in P, 1, 1, 0, is the eigenvector associated with the third eigenvalue in D, 4. To complete our factorization, we just now need to find P inverse and verify that P times D times P inverse does indeed give us back the matrix A. We can use whatever technology or row reduction we like to find P inverse for the matrix P, and then verify by multiplying these three matrices out that P times D times P inverse gives us back the original matrix A. So diagonalizing a matrix is nothing more than re-expression of that matrix in terms of a basis of its own eigenvectors. Because in a basis of eigenvectors, by definition, every matrix acts in a diagonal fashion by scalar multiplication on each of those basis vectors. That means that the expression of a matrix in its eigenvector basis is always much simpler than the original matrix itself. This comes at the cost of having to express a change of basis, which converts back and forth from the eigenvector basis to the standard basis, and vice versa from the standard basis to the eigenvector basis. This is not always possible to do for a given square matrix, but it will be possible whenever the geometric multiplicities and the algebraic multiplicities of all eigenvalues agree with one another. This will always be the case when all of our eigenvalues are different, but it can also be the case, as it was here, when we have repeated roots of our characteristic equation, so long as the geometric multiplicity agrees with the algebraic multiplicity.